Hi, I'm Thomas Finney. Right. I think it will have more impact on a sort of as a political statement than a design level. I think it's conceptually interesting to try to do a hybrid of such different writing systems and and merge them together. And I think insofar as that's possible, it appears to my admittedly ignorant outside eyes that um, Bethum has done as good a job as one can. Whether that's good enough to be something that's genuinely useful or not is another question. I'm, I'm, but I think it was it's a remarkable accomplishment nonetheless. And I think it should at least serve its intended purpose of making a political statement about how these things are are at their heart related and um, I hope it will be taken in the, the vein it was intended. Well, that's an interesting question, seeing as I'm actually in that boat myself right now since I was approached to do um, a typeface or po possibly a set of typefaces for Adlan and I'm trying to come together, come up with a proposal for that myself. And it raises numerous questions. One is, when you have a writing system that just has sort of a, you know, one initial archetypal design, it's very hard to know what the kinds of deviation from that might be acceptable. What's the range of deviation that could be acceptable? So for instance, the, that archetypal design for sort of the second generation Adlam writing is extremely calligraphic in the Western calligraphic tradition um, in terms of the angles involved, but in some senses it's, it has Arabic influences as well. One of the big differences between Arabic typefaces and uh, Western typefaces is the degree to which they hew closely to their calligraphic origins versus in the, the Western case, you know, the type has become more typographic. You know, there are certain kinds of optical compensations. So for instance, if we have a stroke that in the abstract might be drawn with a calligraphy pen, but that curve is joined to a vertical, even the part that would be thick on the calligraphy pen still thins quite a bit as it comes in to join at that stem, and that's a normal thing we do. It's part of type design. If I'm designing an Adlam typeface, are those kinds of compensations unacceptable? Acceptable but discouraged? How much? What's okay? I don't know. So there are some really interesting questions there that, um, you know, I think they may be, they may involve a sort of a dialogue, in the, at least for my, my initial explorations, and there's certainly going to be a dialogue between me and Ibrahim and Abdullah, <clears throat> and possibly involving uh, a certain, as yet unnamed, uh, uh, outside group that I will be working with, as to, you know, their, their takes on this and what's acceptable. And we may prototype some things and show them what the differences are and, and get their feedback. And one of the other interesting things, of course, is that in some cases, those kinds of um, choices are also going to have implications potentially for legibility at small sizes or under certain kinds of extreme conditions. So some of those optical compensations could be seen as having sort of, you could call it, you know, technical benefits or legibility benefits, potentially. And it'll be very interesting to have that discussion. And you know, ultimately, and, and really there's even two levels of, of uh, deciding on that because, or three, and it's what I as a type designer think is good, there's what my client thinks is good, but there's also the people who are ultimately consuming this typeface, you know, they have existing, you know, sort of older style Adlam fonts that are in a very different style. and will they accept this new style stuff and how readily and will if if they were presented with the same choices you know if if they sort of took a focus group approach and and showed these two different you know multiple approaches which ones would be most successful there and i have no idea how that will play out
Um, so I, I am in the dark, but certainly just being aware that there are these kinds of issues, and I'm not going to, I'm not assuming that I will blindly follow the, the models given to me exactly and just reproduce you know, Ibrahim's calligraphy into fonts. I think I, one could, that'd be really easy. Wow, maybe I should do that. My job would be much easier. Uh, but I think I hope to bring some additional thoughts to the table and, and help them think more about how to make typefaces that will be the most functional in a variety of senses of function. Well, um, I think they're two different things, essentially, because, you know, global type design includes Latin. Latin is somehow something separate. And there are a lot of specialized ex extensions to Latin that are important to global type. For instance, the Latin version of full, full day typesetting uses, um, as in, do a number of African languages, use a hooked B and D that you see in very few Latin-based typefaces. Um, so there are, are parts of Latin type design that are really important to global type design, um, even though they're not important in the West, as it were. Um, so I think, but I think non-Latin is a useful bucket, even if there's stuff that is interesting that is and global, it doesn't fall in that bucket.